the viewpoint that I have is that we, um, it's always good to have another agent. Whereas serafinib was approved, the chances of dramatic disease regression was much more modest than in the case of lenvatinib or some of the other kinase inhibitors. For serafinib, it's 15% or thereabouts. For lenvatinib, it's more like 60 or 70%. So in patients who have very aggressive disease that is symptomatic, we have a greater chance of making the disease less symptomatic using a more cytoreductive approach like lenvatinib than serafinib. So that's one very important goal. So it's a different sort of endpoint. So if you have symptoms already and you stabilize the disease and have a delayed time to, to progression, that's favorable in terms of survival, but you don't get any help with your symptoms that are pre-existent. The lenvatinib may do better. Having another approved agent allows us a um, more, uh, greater chance of getting that uh, agent actually to use for our patients. So if we have to use off-label agents that have efficacy proven in, uh, in terms of disease regression in a phase two trial, it's harder and harder to use those agents given more limited uh, insurance and governmental uh, finances. So this gives us more opportunity to treat our patients with an uh, agent which has not only potential for side effects, but potential to actually improve the symptoms that patients have.